Below the Belt TV, Robert, joined here today by rising star Uma Sadiq. I recently signed to Fight One Promotions. Uma, how are you doing? I'm good, thank you. I'm good, thank you. Um, just before we get into the detail, let's clear this up. So, there's an interesting fact. Did you, were you, um, I don't know what they use in the, in the industry, but you were basically a double to Anthony Joshua in the, in the TV commercial. Yeah, I was. Um, that was the Lucas A commercial that came out leading up to the fight against Klitschko at Wembley. So I actually played a 19 year old Joshua. And um, even though Joshua is just slightly younger than me, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. At the very least. Um, yeah, it's just good. It's because, um, I don't know if you're aware, or I don't know if you know the viewers are aware, but our model was all. Okay, like, yeah. didn't know. Wow. Yeah, so it was through that, and um, I was able to get the role. And, yeah, it was exciting. It was good shit. Okay, cool. Is that, would that be through AEG or? No, that was, um, I actually got that privately. So I'm, I'm signing a modeling agency. Okay. But um, I secured that role privately. So word got out, um, sent an email to these lot. Yeah. And, um, with an interest. They got back in touch with me and asked me to come to the casting and it was quite busy casting. So um, when they called me back and said, we'll let this come back again. Um, that, again, that was better and it was good. And um, yeah, luckily I secured the role and uh, that was great. Ended up acting with Joshua's mum as well. Um, so you know, there's a scene where she's bailing them out essentially, and um, I play that scene of uh, a lot of the running scenes and a bunch of other bits that was me in there. Ah, oh, sick, yeah. sick. So um, the two are obviously polar opposites. So if you were if you were posed with that question one day, there's a big modeling contract there on yeah. the table, and you had to choose between that and boxing. It's not even hard. <laughs> it's, it's not, really it's not really an option. Hard. Oh, was just boxing. He boxes, yeah. yeah he boxes. I'm not just because, fortunately, I can do. Um, I happen to have an image that um, is marketable, and you know, that's proven in that I get paid to promote things. So it's another um, thing that I have on the side that can help me keep, you know, afloat financially as a fighter. Because you know, at the start as a fighter, uh, most fighters don't get paid too much. And, yeah, I've heard. And yeah, part-time jobs. So rather than working a part-time job, uh, I could you know do a couple of commercials every now and again, and that keeps me afloat. So yeah, great. I could definitely see you got the experience of that. I mean, he was literally taking direction from you, like yeah. in terms of the, you know how we should was, set up the lighting, lenses. frames, yeah, 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 yeah lenses. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that experience has just come from technical knowledge that I built up in having a YouTube channel before, where I was traveling and. Um, I was sharing my experiences. It was at a time when I wasn't boxing and I was actually just, you know, trying to find myself in this world and decide what it is that I want to do. Um, I think I went through what you call um, quarter life crisis when I was oh, wow. 25. And um, one of the, you know, contributing factors behind that was that I was in boxing fights that I thought I won and my team thought I won. So it wasn't that I was going back getting abolished from my coaches. But I wasn't getting the decisions. Yeah, I read about that. You lost a decision to a Russian lad. Um, yeah, that was the Olympics. Olympics yeah, so yeah. Again, you know, it, 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 and that was before I left boxing and came back. But um, yeah, I just you know, I got to a point where I, after a few bad decisions, I was I just thought to myself, I'm probably the most disciplined fighter I know. I work so hard. I'm so committed. I can carry all these attributes into something else and go into another field and be successful. So. I went off and tried to find myself and find my way in business and whatever else. And uh, you just can't deny your destiny, really, <laughs> because here yeah. I am, I'm boxing again. Yeah. Um, but it feels good, it makes me feel good because I'm not just boxing because it's the only thing that was put in front of me. I've gone out and I've tried different things. Um, I've got different life experiences and I know that this is what I want. So I mean business. And up until uh, you know six weeks ago, I had a job as an accountant. Um, yeah, I was going to yeah. ask you about that, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, feel free to ask whatever you want, but, uh, yeah, so I left that to focus fully on boxing, and, um, you know, it's just because I'm so serious about what I'm doing, and I know that, I mean, I know that I have a good future in this, there's so many things that I can draw from to know, to back up my belief in being the best in the world, and I'm just, you know, glad that I've got Sang Frank one and I get to prove it to everyone. Yeah, definitely, I mean, that must be, um, like, brilliant news for yourself, I yeah. mean, you started boxing quite late, yeah. but um, let's let's you touched on some interesting points. Um, but let's start let's start with life before boxing. Okay. So, um, or maybe even the sort of early stages of you boxing. Yeah. So um, you mentioned that 
you were working as an accountant. Yeah. But obviously, before that, you went to uni. You got your yeah. degree in accountancy. Mm-hmm. You had a you know a relatively a really great career um, in the city as well as an accountant. Yes. Why why the tough world of boxing? Because when I'm in an accountant office, I'm working, and I know what my limits are. I can see what my managers are earning. I can see what the directors are earning, and what the directors are earning is not enough for the life that I visualise myself. And again, like I said, when I'm in the office, I'm working. When I'm in a boxing gym, I might say, yeah, I'm working and I train harder than everyone else and all that, but it's not work. I enjoy this. I live for this. I get so much of a buzz out of being in a boxing gym, being in boxing events and, you know, the promotion and everything else that goes around it. Even here speaking to you, I love all of this. It's not work. It's a lifestyle. So essentially, I've just taken an early retirement. So that's, <laughs> that's how you put it. That's that's that is the best way of phrasing I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> An early retirement. That's, it. <laughs> that's good though. I mean, it shows that you're definitely, from what I can tell in a short space of time, you're definitely an ambitious guy. Um, you know, and it's all about having multiple streams of income. Um, so what, what actually, what was the ignition for you to actually start boxing? Why boxing? I mean, was it because of you, you saw the limits of what a boxer could make with nah, nowadays Floyd Mayweather's, nah. etc.? Yeah, so you get most fighters and um, the turn to boxing because it was, you know, it was a way out or like you said, you know, they got inspired by somebody. I was just a kid who had a lot of energy, um, always enjoyed contact sport of one sort or another. I was a really skinny teenager, but I still played rugby um, for a bit. And I used to play fight with my mates all the time. And there was this one time where one of my friends, um, I'm going to try and make a long story short basically, but no, there was one time when we were play fighting and one of my friends punched one of my others on the arm. And he's like, oh, that hurt, man. That's the punch that we learned in boxing. And I was like, what? <laughs> basically, they've gone to a boxing session without telling me. So oh. I was like, what the hell, man? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so anyway, so they told me when the next one was and I went to it. And there was this guy, um, a remarkable guy, one of the most... Um, important people that I've crossed paths with in my life, Tony Sesse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Tony Sesse, and, um, yeah. He was delivering the session. So he took me on the pads, you know, got on the pads with him, threw a couple of shots, bam, 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 or a couple of combinations, and he's going, oh, you're so good, great shot. You're going to be a world champion. I'm like, yeah, I'm fucking good. I'm sick at this, am I allowed to say it? Yeah, yeah, it's cool, it's cool. Yeah, right, cool, yeah. Yeah, so it's I'm natural, like, basically. Yeah, cool. So I'm like, I'm the man. And then like, he's going to the next person. I'm thinking, yeah, I just showed you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's going to them, bam, bam, bam. And the person wasn't all that as well. And um, he was like, yeah, well done. Great stuff. You're going to be so good. I was like, what? <laughs> so, uh, there was a thing in me. So um, I'm very competitive as an individual. And um, right there and then, I just thought, well, he's clearly just trying to motivate everyone. But I'm going to make sure that this guy, when he tells me that, he means it. And um, it was just, you know, a snowball effect from there. So I became the best in that class, the best in the next class he was at. I just kept asking, where else do you go? I just, I'm just going to challenge everybody. And then um, I got to a point where I was sparring people who actually fight. And I was getting the better of them. But again, I wasn't reading too much into it. So this all started at 16. And when I was 19, I took some time out, out of injury, out of things that would happen outside of boxing. Um, because, you know, getting involved in the wrong places or just getting caught up in wrong crowds or whatever. But anyway, out of injury, six months out, went out, got pissed with a couple of my mates because of the birthday, well, a few of my mates, but a couple of my mates' birthdays. And then three hours sleep, I went to a boxing session with a hangover only because I promised myself the night before I had to do it. Um, so I went in and he's gone, all right, you're going to spar. And I'm like, what? He goes, yeah, you're going to spar, get in the ring. And what do you mean, Tony? You're like, get in the ring, you're sparring. So I've looked, basically what's happening, right? Tony's told someone to come down to spar, not knowing who's going to spar them, and I'm the only person that's turned up. Ah, oh, one of those ones, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, Jesus, so he's just yeah. like, get in the ring, get in the ring. <laughs> I was like, shit, man. So I've got in the ring, um, six months out, hangover, three hours sleep. I'm like, fuck it, I'm going to do what I'm going to do. So I've got in there, sparred this guy three rounds, did really well, surprisingly. And then like, two weeks later, he came to me um, in the gym, and he was like, remember that guy who sparred two weeks ago? And, yeah. And then he went, he just won another championship. And he walked off. And yeah, and it's the way he done it and walked off. And he just left me and I was just there thinking, shit. Just leave you to dr- just dwell on that. Yeah. You take it serious. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you and, can pay dividends. Rah. and then it was in that moment, I was 19 at that time, and I thought, you know what, I don't want to be 30 years of age and telling stories about how I could have been great in boxing. You know, I could have been this guy and watching people on TV going, oh, I could have been that guy. And I thought, no, 
I'm gonna be that guy. I'm gonna not just have a story to tell, but I'm gonna have something to show for it. <laughs>